Welcome back to another episode of the Who You Know Show podcast, where what you know is important, but who you know can make all the difference in your business, career, relationships, and life. My name is Trevor Houston, and on this show, you'll learn the strategy, grit, and mindset it takes to overcome obstacles so you can level up in your career, recover your cash flow, and live the life of purpose that God intended for you. Don't forget to look at the mic drop moments time stamped in the show notes below. And if you've enjoyed today's episode, make sure to pay it forward, subscribe and leave an honest review so we can improve. Thanks for listening. My name is Trevor Houston, and please enjoy this episode of the Who You Know Show. I want to tell you a little bit about this past weekend where I had an amazing, amazing, amazing experience on stage and recording my show live in front of a studio audience at the Video Marketing World Conference in Dallas, Texas. And I want to give a special shout out to the Real News PR team who set up a breathtaking studio out in front of the conference and produce my show live for everyone to see. It was so, so, so amazing. And check this out. In just two and a half days, I was able to batch record over 24 episodes. Like that was so, so cool. It was amazing. And not only was I able to make a massive impact at this conference, but I basically recorded enough content to cover an entire season of our show in just two and a half days. Uh, And my team's going to be editing and releasing those very, very soon. So I'm excited about that. Um, I got to interview some incredible speakers at this conference, but let me tell you what my favorite, favorite part was. It wasn't actually interviewing the different speakers. The best part was I actually decided to open it up and I made an announcement to interview members of the audience. That was my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite part. Um, See, I get to record uh, and interview high profile guests all the time. But this was my opportunity to find some hidden gems and really get to know their story. And after I made the announcement, uh, people flooded over and every single slot got filled up and there was such a demand We actually had a waiting list going, and I wasn't able to get to everyone, unfortunately, but here was my biggest takeaway, right? As I was interviewing all of these people from the audience, so many of the people I met throughout the event, they really wanted to join me, right? I had people come up to me in the conference, and they were talking to me, and they were like, hey, I want to join, but they felt like they either had no value, no story to contribute, or they were scared to come on stage. And it reminded me a lot of my own personal journey with public speaking. And so that's actually why I decided to make this episode today. So today I want to show you how to find your voice and go from the back of the room to making an impact on center stage. Many people are shocked to hear how I still battle with stage fright. And I actually have a massive fear of public speaking. Uh, Matter of fact, as I'm recording this episode in Breakfast with Champions, there's hundreds of people in the room right now. I'm currently dealing with it as we speak. Um, But here's the thing. It's true. Even to this day, I still get butterflies. I get sweaty palms and nerves. But now I use that energy like rocket fuel And I do my best to deliver an amazing experience when I'm on stage or recording my show in front of a live audience. But it didn't always start that way. So you've probably heard that public speaking is feared more than death itself. It may sound crazy, but the vast majority of people rank the fear of public speaking as number one. Actually, 75% according to the National Institutes of Mental Health. For some people, this means maybe speaking to large groups. For others, it's speaking to a single person if that person has the power to evaluate you like a supervisor or maybe in a job interview. For some people, the route 
of fear is buried deep in our past. For example, the fear can come from an experience where we were once embarrassed or ridiculed or even overwhelmed with attention that was supposed to be positive. It might have been a performance situation such as how we were praised or even corrected at home or school. And that is actually where I believe my fears came from. See, growing up, I got in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Listen, I was in and out of juvenile detention centers, alternative schools. I was actually diagnosed with ADD. And when I wasn't in alternative schools, I was forced into uh, you know special education with kids who had disabilities. And I even rode the short bus to school. They had a special class called PASS, or Positive Attitudes for Success. And it even had a padded room that they would often put us in if we got a little bit, you know, too rowdy or too noisy in class. And now that I'm older, I realize that there was nothing, nothing really wrong with me, rather my environment that I was growing up in. I didn't need medication. I simply needed discipline and a positive place to put my energy. And... In the past class, we were not allowed to join the other kids at school except for lunch. And this wouldn't have really been an issue except that I was at a brand new school and I didn't know anyone. And I had a massive fear of going into that lunchroom by myself and not knowing anyone. I felt like the other kids were starting to stare at me and you know, kind of look at me like some kind of rebel or, or freak. And it started to generate thoughts like, maybe I don't belong here. What if they don't like me? You know, and so on and so forth. All of those thoughts that we have on a daily basis. And now I realized that my fear was really just in my head. And I, and I didn't, I didn't want to go out there in that lunchroom. And it was so bad that I would actually take my lunch and eat alone in the bathroom. And either way, it was the survival part of my brain because the situation looked like danger to me. Your body gets ready to fight, flee, or freeze, which means physical tension, shaking, increased blood pressure, rapid heartbeat, sweating, or forgetting what you're about to say. And once all of this gets in motion, the cycle of fear just builds on itself. See, anxiety is your brain trying to keep you safe. For public speaking, the voice of anxiety sounds something like, people won't be interested in what I have to say. I don't have anything to offer this group. If I make a mistake, they're going to laugh at me. I'm not competent. I'm not really very good. And the worst case, the group won't like me. I'll be rejected. I'll be shut out. So how do you overcome such a crippling fear? So I've got 10 steps. And number one, the very first step, first, understand that you do have value. Each and every one of us have a gift from God and a story that I believe is your obligation to share with the world. And here's why I feel this way. The battles that God carries you through in this life have lessons that can help others going through a similar situation. Step number two, you do not need to be an expert. So you need to understand that. And I know this may be a little bit controversial because I'm sure you hear all the time that you shouldn't take advice from someone who isn't an expert, right? Well, this can be true in some situations, but here's the simple truth. You do not need to be an expert to help someone. You just need to be a few years ahead of where they are today. And I'm going to give you an example. I'm not an expert public speaker. 
yet. And I'm still going through the journey. I'm a work in progress. I still get scared, nervous. I make mistakes sometimes. But that's even better because it's relatable and others can see themselves in my story so they can actually take the next step. So here are a few things that I've learned to help you overcome, to find your voice and go from the back of the room to center stage. Here's number three, know your topic. The better you understand what you're talking about, the more you care about the topic, and the less likely you'll make a mistake or get off track. Number four, get organized ahead of time. Carefully plan out all the information you want to present, including any props, audio, visual aids, and if possible, you need to go visit the place that you're going to be speaking and review any available equipment before your presentation. Because the more organized you are, the less nervous you'll likely be. Here's step number five. Practice. And then, guess what? Practice some more. Practice your complete presentation several times. Do it for some people you're comfortable with and ask for feedback. And it could also be helpful to practice with people that you're unfamiliar with. And I would also consider making a video of your presentation so you can watch it for yourself and see if there are any opportunities for improvement. Number six, visualize your success. Imagine that your presentation or your speech went so well. Positive thoughts can help decrease some of your negativity about your performance and relieve some of your anxiety. Number seven, don't fear a moment of silence. If you lose track of what you're saying or start to feel nervous and your mind goes blank, it may seem like that you've been silent for an eternity, but in reality, it's probably only a few seconds. And even if it's longer, it's likely your audience won't mind a simple pause to consider what you've been saying. Just take a few slow, deep breaths and get back on course. Number eight, recognize your success. After your speech or presentation, give yourself a pat on the back. It may not have been perfect, but chances are you're far more critical of yourself than your audience is. And number nine, get some support. Join a group. Join a group that offers support for people who have difficulty with public speaking, like Toastmasters or any nonprofit organizations with local chapters that focus on training people in speaking and leadership skills. And number seven, say yes and get started. And this was the biggest one for me. I literally just started saying yes to invitations. Understand that an invitation is an indication of a qualification. It means that someone sees something in you that you may not see in yourself. And sometimes simply saying yes to the call is all it takes to activate the gift lying dormant within you. Thanks for listening to the Who You Know Show podcast. My name is Trevor Houston, and if you've enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing wherever you listen and leave us a positive review to help us keep the mics on in the studio. Until next week, that's the show. It's all about who you know.